Marvel's characters are more popular than ever, so it was only a matter of time before the most famous character, Spider-Man, joined their successful film franchise. After so many successful releases, the Spider-Man line could only keep doing well. Now that Spider-Verse 2 is almost out, merchandise releases spoil the movie. This and more in the video for today. First, Spider-Verse 2 merch spoils another Spider-Man in the sequel. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse will be a direct sequel to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which was a big hit for Sony Animation in 2018. According to the first teaser, Miles Morales, Shamik Moore, Gwen Stacy slash Spider-Gwen, Haley Steinfeld, and the new Spider-Man 2099 will all be back in Across the Spider-Verse, Oscar Isaac. The first team in Spider-Verse was made up of Peter B. Parker, Peter Porker, Spider-Man Noir, and Penny Parker. Parker, but it's still not clear how many of these characters will come back. The main bad guy in Across the Spider-Verse will be The Spot, who will be voiced by Jason Schwartzman. The sequel will also add to the large group of spider people from the first movie, and actor Jorma Takone will lend his voice to the Vulture. As the movie's new release date of June 2nd, 2023 gets closer, more characters are being shown. On Twitter, new pictures of spider-punk toys from Spider-Man Across the the Spider-Verse have been posted. In the comics, Spider-Punk, whose real name is Hobby Brown, is from Earth-138 and often uses both his web shooters and an electric guitar. The first toy is called Spider-Punk Web Blast, and it looks like it combines all of Spider-Punk's tools into one. He is shown shredding the guitar and swinging from building to building. Spider-Punk's eye-catching horns stick out of the top of a more traditional Spider-Man mask. In the comics, Spider-Punk is not Peter Parker at all. Instead, he is a teenager named Hobart Brown. On his Earth-138, the young hero fought more for freedom, along with Captain Anarchy, an alternate version of Carl Morgenthau's Flag Smasher, and a different version of Hulk. In his universe, Spider-Punk led a spider army against President Norman Osborn. He used the power of punk rock and electric guitars to destroy Osborn's technology and end his rule. In Marvel's Spider-Man for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, there is also a Spider-Punk skin that gives the player a power that lets them rock out. Next, Jamie Foxx recalls almost spoiling No Way Home's 3 Spider-Man reveal. Jamie Foxx talked about how he almost ruined the return of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in Spider-Man No Way Home from Marvel Studios and Sony. Foxx talks about this mistake in a new interview with Cinema Blend. The movie Spider-Man No Way Home came out almost eight months ago. The actor said that making the movie was like a rock concert, and then he talked about how he almost gave away the surprise. Fox almost took a picture of Maguire, Garfield, and himself as Spider-Man before someone on set told him not to. He didn't realize that Maguire and Garfield's return was supposed to be a secret. Fox's actions probably wouldn't have made much of a difference though, since Maguire and Garfield return in Spider-Man No Way Home had been a well-known fact in Hollywood for months. Once it was known that the threequel would be connected to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, have a multiverse story, and feature Doc Ock, Alfred Molina, many people thought the other characters from previous Spider-Man movies would also be showing up. The casting report about Fox playing Electro again made this idea even stronger. So even if the actor didn't post his almost spoiler image, many fans were already sure that Maguire and Garfield would be joining Holland in Spider-Man No Way Home. Even though there were a lot of rumors, Sony and Marvel Studios decided to save the biggest surprise for Spider-Man No Way Home. Even when mistakes in the trailers made it look like Maguire and Garfield were cut out of VFX, the secret was kept. In fact, Kevin Feige, the man in charge of building the MCU, told people that rumors could ruin their enjoyment of going to the movies. In the end though, Fox's post on social media would have been right on the mark, and the fact that all three Spider-Man characters worked together was a big nostalgic highlight for viewers. Even the actors who played the bad guys knew they were part of something special, and were eager to talk about it. Moving on, return of Spider-Man's deadliest and most obscure villain teased. Spider-Man was once being chased by a magical wasp that was very hard to get rid of. Well, it looks like she's about to come back, and put the Spider-Verse in danger.
danger. When Spider-Man first learned about his magical connection to the spider totem, he and Doctor Strange went to the astral plane to fight a bad guy. But while he was there, he caught the attention of Shathra, a magical wasp creature. She went back to Earth with him and tried to find him. In the end, Spider-Man beat her with the help of Ezekiel and an African spider god. Even though Shathra is a very dangerous bad guy who almost killed Spider-Man for good, she hasn't been used much since. It seemed pretty clear what would happen to her, so it would be hard to bring her back. Obviously, no character in a comic book stays dead forever, and given how many times Spider-Man and his other characters have used spider totems in their stories, it was only a matter of time before their natural, magical predator came back. The way they are connecting Shathra's story to Arana's is also very interesting. At first, these two things had nothing to do with each other, except for the character Ezekiel, who helped Arana come to be. But it makes sense that they do. Shathra is a magical wasp, and the Sisterhood of the Wasp is a group of bad people who are after Arana. It's also good that Marvel seems to be taking a break from spider versus usual bad guys. In most of the Spider-Verse, Morlin and his family of inheritors are the ones who hunt spiders. But it's probably for the best that it looks like Spider-Man and his friends will have to fight someone else this time. In other related news, how would Spider-Man vs. The Amazing Spider-Man affect the MCU? If Spider-Man vs. The Amazing Spider-Man does well, the Marvel Cinematic Universe version might never be made. The movie would show what was good about both the Raimi and Webb versions of Spider-Man. This would bring back interest in both franchises, and could lead to Sony making more movies set in both timelines. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies could go on at the same time as Mark Webb's. There could also be more multiverse crossover movies, like adaptations of the Spider-Verse or Spider-Geddon comics. In a different situation, Spider-Man vs. The Amazing Spider-Man might not have done as well as The Amazing Spider-Man 2, leading to a new start for Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The problem with this is that by this time, the Infinity Saga would be almost over, and Civil War was a great place for Holland Spider-Man to start. The MCU could have kept going with the Infinity Saga without Spider-Man, but they chose to wait until Phase 4 to bring him in. This would mean that Spider-Man wouldn't help the Avengers fight Thanos and the Black Order, and it would also change Tony Stark's character in Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame in a way that would make him less emotional. In this case, if a crossover movie like No Way Home happens, the versions of Spider-Man played by Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield would already know each other. Finally, what if Tobey Maguire had been the MCU's first Spider-Man? Early plans for Iron Man would have made Peter Parker, played by Tobey Maguire, the first Spider-Man in the MCU. This could have had interesting effects on the rest of the franchise. If Spider-Man 3 happened before Tony Stark's first movie, Peter Parker, played by Tobey Maguire, would be an experienced superhero by the time Tony Stark became Iron Man. This is assuming that Spider-Man 3 happened before Tony's first movie. Most of the MCU's first solo adventures don't take place in New York City, so Spider Adventures escapades as a superhero wouldn't cause any problems. Spider-Man could easily be explained away without making many changes to the movies. In Avengers Endgame, it was shown that the Ancient One was protecting New York when the Chitari attacked, but that wasn't shown in the 2012 movie. Even though Spider-Man couldn't help the Hulk fight the Abomination, it's easy to imagine him saving civilians and fighting Hammer Drones and Chitari behind the scenes. The most important thing for Spider-Man would happen in Captain America's Civil War, when Tony Stark would probably try to get him to join his team of heroes who support the Sokovia Accords. Peter is very careful about keeping his secret identity a secret, so it's unlikely that he would agree to the Accords. It's also hard to imagine Stark or S.H.I.E.L.D. finding out who Superman is. Stark could get Spider-Man to join his team by offering him something, like a better reputation in New York if people find out that Spider-Man is an ally of Iron Man. Spider-Man could easily do what his comic book counterpart did in Civil War, which was to briefly join Tony's side, but then switch to Captain America's side by the end of the conflict. This would make New Yorkers trust him less than they did before the war. Well, that's all the time we had for today. Make sure to like and follow for more amazing content. Cheers!